hey guys, it's Susie Lolly. If I've never met you, then my hair is sticking out. You know, that's your first impression of me. But anyway, <laughs> this is part two. Welcome to part two of using Canvas as a newsletter. And it's a series, a mini series, mind you, that I thought of, I thought would be helpful because so many of you have been doing digital learning or face-to-face -face learning or a combination of the two. And you have had to previously make a paper newsletter and send it home. And I talked about all the reasons I don't love that in part one. So go back and watch the thumbnail that says part one, whereas this one says uh, that direction. Yes, that direction says part two. <laughs> go look for the one that says part one. Um, if you've been using a paper newsletter or you've even sent a PDF home with parents, ugh, not my favorite. So I talked about three ways to use Canvas directly as a newsletter. But then I promised you that I would show part two, which is adding a tool. It's a free Microsoft tool called Sway. If you have Office 365 or you can get a free teacher account with Office 365 um, that you can use Sway, which is basically a digital poster, a one pager, if you will. But it gives a lot of multimedia fun. And so if you like that one page look, but you want to put it in Canvas, that's what this video is about. So stay tuned. Just like any good tech tool, Sway is one of those things that is updating constantly. You've probably noticed that with Canvas. It changes, it updates. And so anything that I show in my tutorial, you're like, the button's no longer there. You can let me know, but I just didn't want to remake the whole tutorial. <laughs> I put a lot of work into it the first time. So um, anyway, the gist of it is exactly the same. So if any buttons have moved, you can certainly let me know in the comments, but I'm probably not going to update the tutorial. Just saying, okay? I want to let you know that. Before we get into how to make a Sway newsletter and how to take that Sway newsletter and put it in Canvas, let's just look at an example of what one could look like, okay? You guys know I don't make the cutest ones, okay? This one's functional, but I want you to notice that in Sway you have lots of remix options. We'll get to that later in the tutorial so you can have lots of backgrounds, lots of themes, and Sway does the work automatically. But you can embed videos in here, like this is a Microsoft Stream video, but if you had a YouTube video where maybe you wanted to give a... a an announcement about what's something that was coming up this week. You can have video embedded there. You can have, these are called cards where I have like, here's our weekly spelling words and vocabulary words. Um, this teacher's team or her theme was team. And so I just have a little sports image there. Okay. Um, I posted the kids' birthdays on there. They were going to the zoo on Friday. I literally took her paper newsletter and just put it into Sway. Um, and then I had all of the subjects that they were going to be doing that week, all the lessons and, and different themes, and then even embedded some QR codes that went to a place value song and, and long and short vowels. So again, all these are things that would have been on paper, but she wanted them digitally. So we put them in Sway, which embeds into Canvas. It's very meta. We put one thing into another thing into another thing. So if you like yours to look like a just a page, but it's digital and it's very easy to edit. Stay tuned, learn how to make Sway. And then at the end, I'll make that Sway Canvas connection. To find Sway, you just log into your school's instance of Office 365. Now, a lot of schools now have all the tiles laid out for you on the landing page, but if yours doesn't, we affectionately call this little symbol the waffle. And you can come up to the waffle and you are looking for a turquoise icon called Sway. Again, if you don't see it, you might want to find it under all apps. And I'm going to navigate to Sway, and I will see that here I can start a new blank Sway. I can start from a document. If you have a Word or a PDF document, when I click on that, it'll let me choose those two files. Um, or I can do some different templates that they offer. Also on Sway, I can search here, and down below, I will see my recent Sways. You can tell I love Sway. I use it a lot. I should have mentioned this in my benefits of Sway, because probably this would have sold more of you. But if you've ever had students who take 35 years to make all their slides ugly, blinky things, none of them match, but they think they're nice, then this solution is also for you because you're going to see how Sway focuses on two components here. You're going to see the storyline side and the design side. Design is not the first thing they pop up on. So they have to forcefully choose to go over and look for a design. And when they do, you will be amazed at how much of the work is done for them as far as making it look good. They're going to focus, hopefully, on what my friend Ellen calls the meat and potatoes first, okay? So we're just going to, for today's example, I clicked right here in what's called a card. Sway is made of cards. And so I'm in a title card right now, and that's the only one you will get automatically when you're in your storyline side of Sway. And I'm going to title this A Place I'd Like to Go. I almost want a trip to Paris, but womp womp, I didn't. So I'm going to put Paris, France. And if I wanted to add a background picture, I could, but again, I'm going to do meat and potatoes first. And I'm going to give three reasons I'd like to go to Paris. So I'm going to click this little plus, and the little plus allows you to add more types of cards. 
you will also see the most you will always see the most frequently accessed ones here, but you can also drill down and look at just text or just media or where it says group, it should say pictures because it's different ways you can display groups of pictures. But I'm gonna start with just text and I'm gonna say I need a heading one and I'm gonna say I speak French. Oui, oui, okay. I'm gonna add a second reason, also a heading one. I want them to look the same size and you'll see it says heading one there. Um, what's another reason they have great food? Great French food. And let's see one more heading. I've never been to Europe. Now, when I teach students to create a sway, I do not create them, or I never teach kids in PowerPoint or sway to use complete sentences. But just for this example, I want you to see what happens, okay? So I have three, three heading cards there. Then I'm able to add pictures, add subtext. When I click on a card, that green plus comes back and I can do different things inside it. So I can add like now a text card or whatever I wanted to add below. We'll get to those in a minute. I'm going to show you the basics, okay? So if I want to start adding pictures to right here where it says background, here's my trick. I click on background and watch this magic, y'all. Sway has crawled through my content and has picked out keywords that it thinks I might want to search before I even get there. So I'm going to click on this category called Paris, and it's going to bring up right now all, or it's on images, but if I wanted videos, I could pick those too. But I'm just going to stick with images for now. I'm going to pull in this really cool picture of the Eiffel Tower. But before I do, I want you to notice this is searching already just Creative Commons. So it's gonna help your students find a more likely candidate that respects copyright. So I could just click this and it would go in the box But and when I click add, but I am a control freak and here's what I like to do. I like to drag my pictures and here's why. Say I didn't want this to be the background of the whole card that says Paris. I can drag it right below. Do you see that green line? The green line shows you where the picture is going to drop. So I'm still holding my mouse. I know you can't see that, but I've not let go. I'm gonna drop it as a background first. And then I'm gonna show you how we can check out what it looks like so far. I'm gonna go to the word design. That's like my preview pane. And you'll see that I now have this beautiful background. I won't get down into the rest of it yet, but I have this beautiful background, but I'm like, uh, that looks like a rocket that's on fire. I can't even tell what it is. So instead, I would like to drag that picture out of the box. Remember looking for the green line and I still want it to be near Paris, but not the whole background. I'm gonna click that, see how that looks under design, okay? And now I have more of what I liked, but if you liked it the other way, feel free to put it back as the background, okay? When you have a title card, you have three choices here. You can make something bold, italicized, or link it somewhere. Obviously, when you click link, you're familiar with that type of a box. Um, a picture card is going to have different options. It, you can add bullets with text in there. You can add numbers or, again, link. Here's this cool thing called focus points. For example, in, when you saw my background a minute ago and I showed you it was just the top of this picture, I really want the whole picture to show. And you can see in my preview down here, it's not going to. So what I can do is I can say, hey, I need this entire image to show, and it'll make it smaller, but it will respect your wishes. Now, here's what I kept doing by mistake when I first learned this. I would keep clicking the reset button, and then it would take off the check mark. Well, Susie, you need to click that and don't touch anything. It saves automatically. And now I've told Sway to make this whole picture important, okay? I also can change what's called emphasis, and that will not only change the size of the card in general, but also the motion that it does. Because guess what? Another little, another little comparison to this tool is photo story. If you remember way back in the day, if you're as old as me, I've been teaching 16 years, and if you're as old as me, you remember a little thing called photo story that Microsoft had that would take your pictures and jazz them up a little bit and give them some motion, kind of like a Ken Burns effect. It was the iMovie before iMovie. And so um, this is similar to that. When you click these different emphasis elements, it gives more dramatic motion and also changes the size of the card. So I'm gonna keep it here, show you what it looks like, okay? And then I'm going to go back and I'm gonna make it dramatic. And when I scroll down now, I have, I have a mix obviously that doesn't have any motion, but you'll see that change on a different one, okay? So I have heading cards. Again, I can add text if I wanna add like a paragraph down below, which I usually teach my students not to do, but here is a paragraph. And you'll keep seeing different options like 
on this one, can I convert it to a heading or emphasize it or whatever? So let me just quickly run you through the different types of cards besides just text. I'm gonna click the green plus. I'm gonna go into the media group because that's where all the cool stuff is hiding. I can do images. I can add a video. Um, when I click that, it's gonna let me search for a video. But I also, right here where it says suggested, if I have something already saved, I can go down to my device and pull it in, or I could use one of these choices. I don't usually use those. I just do suggested or my device, okay? So I can import a video, add a caption, whatever I wanna do there. I can also, this is pretty new, I can add audio. Do you remember a few minutes ago, I showed you a center where I had recorded the directions because it was habitats for little kids, AKA little kids who don't have strong reading skills. Well, I can click here to add an audio file and I will have had to record that. Now on audio, you can't find it somewhere. You need to record it. I like using the little tool on your computer that's called Sound Recorder. And when you use that tool, it saves right into your My Documents under this folder called Sound Recordings. So I've done this with students before. So I can just pull up a sound recording that I already have. It will always say, give me a minute and it's processing, and so you'll just have to wait. Now, you don't have to stand there and you know look at it. It'll happen in the background. But I love audio for giving, again, those directions to students, or if you know that students are gonna be doing kind of a showcase for parents, but maybe the student can't attend or you want them to move around the room, they could do a little recording and narrate their presentation for parents. So that's another option. What other tools are there? You can embed things in here. Remember the quiz that you saw on another one of my uh, sways? You can actually take like a, um, a Microsoft form and embed it. You can embed a sway within a sway. Woo, woo. So if I wanna have a teacher sway and I want to embed all my student sways and then share one link with parents, that is powerful. So again, embed code can go in there. I just paste it again from another sway. Let me go get some code so that you can see this magic. Uh oh, it's magic, you know. I have to sing while things are happening, okay? So say, for example, this is one of my students' presentations. I would ask them to go grab the embed code. They don't have to understand it. They just have to copy it. They copy it. And in my big sway, I can paste their embed code and I could grab all of theirs. Another way I've used that is actually my newsletters have other newsletters embedded so that if teachers yes, did not read last month's newsletter, excuse me while I get to it, I have the October one and the September one in here. So it's a sway within a sway. I just think that's so cool. What else? Any other major cards I want to show you um, under media? You can upload stuff. Womp womp. That's kind of easy peasy. Okay, the last thing I want to show you on the storyline side of things is the group function. I want you to think about when you go to grandma's house. And Grandma has this whole collection of pictures. Now, back in Grandma's day, they didn't always use a photo album, so she has them in a shoebox. Um, and you just sit on the couch and you flip through all these old pictures and you love it. Well, one way that you can display pictures if you have a group of pictures is called a stack. And I want you to think of that one as like Grandma's couch, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and add a Grandma's couch stack. <laughs> and when I do, I'm going to click Add Content. I'm going to click Add an Image. And I'm just going to go grab... When I say grab, I'm just going to click on several images of Paris to make a good looking stack. You'll see it says seven things are selected. I'm going to click add. And then when I go to my design side, I can get some bad images because <laughs> it's acting up. Okay, there they go. So look how cool that is. I can click and flip. And I will not, for sake of time, I will not show you all the different types of groups, but Stack is one. If I click on it, you'll see they're all kind of highlighted in gray together. I can come up and I can either ungroup them if I don't like the way they're displaying, or I can change the size and emphasis, or I can change the group type. So I can set them up to be, you know, a grid or just something like that. So, so many cool things you can do with groups of images. So on the next little segment, I'm going to talk about how to change the look of your sway after you're done with all the meat and potatoes. Now I wanna make a little note before we go to the wonderful design side of things. You noticed earlier when I clicked on any of my sways, I automatically came into them in this ugly preview. That is because I am the owner. Anyway, anytime you want to see how others are gonna preview your sway, you can click this little play button, 
which I don't want to do right now, but I'll show you in just a minute, okay? So don't worry that your people who look at it are going to see it ugly like this. Just when you're the owner and you click it, it comes into this storyline mode. So let's get to the design side, which is always the most fun, but here's the coolest thing. It's not hard with Sway, okay? When you click on the design side, you're going to see a really small menu up here, and this menu includes the word styles. Now, I want you to notice I never told this to have a white background. I never told it to have certain fonts, and in my storyline, it does not have any of those things. What Sway does for you is it makes you a graphic designer, and most importantly, makes your students graphic designers. It picks fonts and colors that should match, so they're not giving you 55 different tacky things, which, amen, I appreciate that. Um, but what you can do and what your students can do is they can come up to this little palette here with the word styles and there's one magic button that most of them can click and get what they need. It's called remix. So when I click that, it changes to other things. Now that's super ugly. I hate it, but I can keep going. And if I accidentally miss one that I really liked, like I'm going to be honest, I really liked the white one. I can just hit the undo button and go back. I really like this font on this background. If you have students who are a little more picky or you're designing one and you're a little bit more picky, you can change the way that the slide views. Now, I'm going to be honest. I think I want you to make the motion right now that you do when you're scrolling through something on your phone. You scroll with a flick top to bottom. So I think the way this is going to make the most sense for parents and visitors who are reading your sway is to, is to have a vertical scroll. If you remix it, sometimes it is going to change to a different scroll according to the remix. Now, of course, it's not doing it while you're watching me, but just trust me, that does happen. Let me get back to my favorite one again. Here I go. Here I go. Here I go. Here I go again. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. You also can come down and say, hey, you know what? I don't really like that font combination, so I want to pick one of these. And then, if you're super picky, you can go to customize, and it can pick your same font, but give you different color palettes or different combinations of fonts that it says match. Okay, for example, a, a um, more swirly one with a straight one. Like they know how to do graphic design and if you will trust them and if your students will trust them, it usually will make something appealing. So that is the whole styles tab. Isn't that the coolest? It found the pictures for you by reading your slides and then it suggested beautiful designs. When you're done, this X will collapse that sidebar and you're left with the preview that you had. So once you have your Sway newsletter ready to go, how do you get it into Canvas? Well, I'm glad you asked. In Sway, you're going to click the Share button. You're going to come down to where it says Get Embed Code. Don't worry if you understand anything that code says. Just copy it. And then you're going to go into Canvas. And in Canvas, you know I love modules. So I'm going to start at modules for most everything. And then um, I'm just going to put this in a random place, but you can put it wherever you want. Like here, here's a module for the whole week, and maybe my newsletter starts that module. I just go to the plus sign and I'm going to choose page in this case. You can embed in a lot of different places, uh, but I'm going to put mine just on a page. And I'm going to say new page. And I'm going to call this February embedded newsletter. I'm writing embedded so that later on, if I need to use this to demo something else, I can. Okay, it's going to go to the bottom. But remember, I can use the draggy handle, that technical term, to put it at the top if I want that to be the first thing. I could go ahead and publish it, but there's no content on it. So remember when you start at the modules, you have to go into edit mode from clicking on the title, which is a live link. I'm going to go into edit. Mine still says HTML editor, but again, I'm working from a free account. If you have a paid account, your HTML editor might be down here at the right somewhere under like a hidden menu. So I'm going to go into HTML editor. I just paste that code. It looks crazy. If I had pasted that on the regular rich content editor, it would have literally showed as a code. I don't want that to happen. So now I'm going to go ahead and save and publish at the same time. And voila, there is a full copy of that Sway. If I make any changes, they will completely show here. I make changes in Sway and because it's embedded, it's a living document. It also does allow kids to go full screen if they wanted to see that. Now I have my screen cut weird but um, it would show up on the whole screen if they wanted to do that. So it's right there. Parents and students can see your newsletter all built into to Canvas. Ain't that neat? Hey guys, I put my heart into these videos, so I hope you loved it. I hope you've loved all of them, but if you haven't, then make sure you go back and watch the previous videos. I'm making playlists for you all the time. So if you're somebody who wants time savers, there's a playlist for that. If you want to gamify, playlist for that. And all of my themes of my blog. So did you like it? Go ahead and click the thumb below.
If you really liked it, I'd love if you shared it on your favorite social media channel. I'm at Suzy Lolly on Twitter. And then finally, my very favorite is if you subscribe. Subscribe to YouTube and subscribe on the blog. Take care.